Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth weekly news update with all the new information about Jurassic World Evolution 2. It was a week full of new info, from a German article that they thought we wouldn't notice, but we did, to yesterday's Dev Diary which was full of hidden gems, and of course some things plucked from the bowels of social media, by which I mean Twitter. We finally have a new update to the species list and it's a big update. Eight new confirmed species. I will go through everything as quickly and concisely as possible, but it's a lot, so strap yourself in. If you want to stay up to date on Jurassic World Evolution 2, subscribe to the channel. And if you like these weekly news updates, please leave a like on the video and speak the language of the algorithm. Here's nine seconds for you to do your thing. <laughs> Starting on Twitter, someone asked about some of the clipping we've been seeing in the species field guides, which I've pointed out as well. Frontier replied that the in-game footage is still from pre-alpha and alpha versions of the game, so it's still subject to change. So I'd say let's not fret about it until we see it in the final gameplay. Someone else asked about the rivalry between Stegosaurus and Ceratops Day, as we learned from the forum article of the Stegosaurus Species Field Guide, and whether more dinosaur species have innate rivals like that. Frontier replied, the dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2 will have certain species they won't be able to peacefully cohabitate with. I'll be very curious to see what other kind of interspecies feuds they've introduced. A little bit of vindication for myself, Frontier confirmed that the foot we see in the first trailer for the game, the pre-rendered announcement trailer, is, in fact, the foot of a T-Rex. A lot of people were convinced it was either the Spinosaurus or Giganotosaurus, but Nah, it was just the good old Rex. And speaking of feet, Sonia Tis was the first one to point out in the comments on yesterday's video that the dinosaurs now leave footprints. A very cool little detail to have in the game. We have something to look forward to next Friday as well. It's the last Friday of July and Frontier is planning another monthly highlight stream. Highlight streams mostly just sum up some of the stuff we already knew, but last time there was some new information revealed in the stream as well. Hopefully next Wednesday we'll get a new species field guide again, although it is possible they'll postpone that until Friday to reveal it during the live stream, like they did with the Amargosaurus species field guide. Next thing I want to talk about are the new confirmed species. We haven't had any newly confirmed species for a couple of weeks, so when we found out at the start of the week, thanks to a German article, that the Gallimimus was confirmed to return to the game, it was already nice to have a break from that streak of so many weeks, with the species list still at 15. But during the Dev Diary, they revealed many, many more species. Namely, the Diplodocus, note the spines on the back, it's not an Apatosaurus, the Chasmosaurus, Dracorex, Taurosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and Carithosaurus, which we all saw in the in-game footage. And we're also shown this shot of the management screen, which shows the Albertosaurus and the Nigerosaurus, the Camarasaurus we already knew about. I didn't even notice these background images at first, and Lima was the first to point them out to me. There is a small caveat, these screenshots that they used are from the current version of the game, from Jurassic World Evolution 1. I literally recognize the exact one from the Albertosaurus, which they use for the promotion of Claire's Sanctuary. So these images are clearly just placeholders. However, I do suspect that they wouldn't put in images of species that aren't returning, given that they, they would have known how people would be poring over all of the details in this dev diary. So I will conclude that these species are hereby confirmed to return. That also seems to confirm the return of the tour trucks. Because I know I'll get comments otherwise, I have to address this. Some people are very much convinced that the dinosaur we see in the exhibit here is a Parasaurolophus. I personally don't think this grainy image in any way conclusively shows that this is the para. Again, it feels like a Rorschach test to me. The thing is though, Parasaurolophus is coming to the game, because of course it is. So it's one of those predictions that can't be disproven. If they reveal the Parasaurolophus four weeks from now, people are gonna say, see, I told you this was the para. But that's not really how it works. I could point to a rock and say, 
that's the Dilophosaurus. When the Dilophosaurus inevitably gets announced, that doesn't mean that rock was a Dilophosaurus. This is why I'm not convinced it's a Parasaurolophus. People are saying they can see the head crests, but what we more than likely could be seeing are just the pixels of the dinosaur blending with the pixels of the fence and the pixels of some darker spots in the sand. When you pause it at the right time, it looks very convincing, I'll give you that. But if you pause at another time, much less so, as in not convincing at all. For the Parasaurolophus at the head of the group, the crest just seems to disappear. And for the one closest to the fence, it seems to morph into a double crest. Which is why I am not including the para in the confirmed species list, although I'm sure it will be in the game. We do get a look at a very cool and new threat to our parks, sandstorms. Different biomes will deal with different challenges like this. So in the taiga we get snowstorms and in the desert we get sandstorms. In the German article and in the dev diary we get to see a lot of the new UI. User interfaces are of course still subject to change, but what we see now is a good indication of what we will get. The first couple I will discuss are from the German article, so they will have lower quality, please bear with me. For the dinosaur UI, we notably have a new stat for the dinosaurs, namely stamina. In the hatchery UI, it appears that there are slight differences in the skin tones of the two Amargosaurs shown. This possibly confirms that we will get skin previews prior to release, which is a very necessary feature considering how expansive the new skin system is. We also get a look at the UI for our building customization, specifically the infinite color range we can choose from. At the bottom we have 11 slots for saved colors, so you can easily match your buildings to one another. The main UI in the game looks like this. In the bottom right we have time controls, a slide that indicates threat level in the park, our money, and the star rating for our park. Similar to the current game, we have tabs on the left side of the screen, which take us to the control room, the locations, management view, operations, enclosures, attractions, amenities, scenery, path, power, decorations, and we'll come back to this, dinosaur transport, and delete. As I said, we'll talk more about decorations a little later. For now, I want to stick with discussing the UI. But we are finally getting good looks at individually placeable decorations. So stay tuned for that. You definitely want to see that. We also get to see the UI for the environment tab in which we have foliage, water, terrain paints, rocks, feeders, and terrain manipulation. Unfortunately, as far as we can see at the moment, Foliage is only placeable with a brush. We don't see any individually placeable trees yet. The rocks, however, are individually placeable and can be turned 360 degrees on both the X and the Y axis and will have 20 rocks in total, judging by the fact that we can still slide down. The terrain paints are determined by the biomes we are in, as we can see here. The terrain types we get to choose from all match this specific environment. Which makes sense, but it is a shame if you'd want the freedom of creating another biome within the main biome of the park. It is a little limiting. What I do like is that it appears that at the very least the rocks don't have a hitbox on them. You can see over here that there is a cactus overlapping with it, and here we can see just how close two rocks are together. But unlike the first game, we don't get a couple of rocks as one item. They're all individual, and they're clearly placed very closely together. The dev diary shows us the UI for our staff, our scientists, pretty extensively. Under recruitment, we can decide which scientists we want to hire. It shows their costs, level, skills, unique traits, and even a little bio. As park managers, we decide which scientist is the one we need for our parks, and different scientists react differently to the job. For example, Sekalaga Rustin has a higher threshold for stress. And stress is an important factor when it comes to managing our staff. In Jurassic World Evolution 2, we get a staff building where our scientists can rest. Because every time we assign them a task, their stress level goes up and we need to give them time to rest or else they'll get burnt out. And in an absolutely endearing show of vilifying mentally ill people, a burnt out scientist will sabotage your park. 
The last bit of UI is the one we already saw before. This shows the ratio of different types of guests in our park. We have four guest types, how many of them we have in our parks, and what they like to keep them entertained. That is all for the UI. Let's look at some new dinosaur behaviors and skins. A threat display from the Margosaurus. We also see two trikes fighting, and we see a trike fighting a Stegosaurus. They are battling for the territory within the enclosure, and the two trikes are probably fighting for dominance. We have a T-Rex, and we see raptor pack hunting. Sort of. Not quite. We see three of them chase a Stegosaurus. We also see a raptor pounce a goat. Using the raptors, they showed off a bit of the skin system, but we still don't quite see the extent of what we can do. Next up are the buildings and guest facilities. We see a very different looking aviary. This one is metal as opposed to being glass domed. We have the confirmed return of the monorail. We get a better look at the hotel, which also seems to be coming in different sizes. And restrooms are back. Here we see a showcase of how we can customize the guest buildings. We can see the wide variety in options available, and it gives an exciting look at how we can make our parks truly our own. There are even Jurassic Park themed elements, like the door on this one. Note how these planters in front are not changing as the building is customized. I'm pretty sure these are individually placeable and can be placed right on top of the path as we see. We also have these things, which I think are lights. We have flags that are off the path, so these are also an individually placeable item. We have a look at the table and chairs they mentioned in the feature focus from a while back. And the eagle-eyed Coco Loco Burb pointed out that there is a Spinosaurus skull decoration next to the restroom, but it definitely doesn't look like it's part of the building. So that is also apparently an individually placeable decoration. And going back to the icon for the decoration tab, it's a fountain. I'd be very surprised and actually feel very duped if they choose a fountain for the icon and then didn't give us fountains. It would be very strange. I'm definitely not expecting that. So I think we're going to get some very pleasant surprises under that tab. In the Dev Diary, we get our first glimpse at a tank for marine reptiles. It's an oblong shaped concrete tank lined with fencing. From this single shot, we can't determine how it works. Basically, there are three options, roughly. It's either just a simple placeable building, which I don't suspect because marine reptiles of different sizes should require a tank of different sizes. It could also be similar to the aviary where you place it and can then expand upon it, which I think is most likely. You place a circular tank, just like you can place a circular aviary, and if you place another circular tank close to it, they'll automatically join to give you this oblong shape. And then you can keep adding to it. Or in the most ideal situation, you select a tank wall, the same way you select any fence type. You create any size or shape you want. And as soon as the two ends meet, the game recognizes it as a tank, digs down and fills it with water. If Zoo Tycoon could do this in the early 2000s, you can do it in 2021 Frontier. But yeah, the more I look at it, the more I think it works like the aviary. Finally, we have two things from the German article. Ranger team tasks are more automated in conjunction with the ranger posts. Ranger teams automatically, periodically patrol an enclosure, collecting data on the dinosaurs, and then also appear to do some tasks automatically, like refilling the carnivore feeders and possibly also alerting the mobile veterinary unit if a ranger team notes a dinosaur is unwell. And we get our first look at that paleo medical facility. The German article also explains more about the internal modules for buildings. We can pick up to eight modules to fully customize a building's function to suit specific guest needs. So for example, to target it towards adventurers or to target it towards nature lovers by mixing and matching the internal modules. For internal modules, you can think of the standard functions like a restaurant and a bowling alley, but also new things like an aquarium and an entertainer. And how you combine them determines which type of guest is most satisfied with that building. This was a super quick rundown of all of the information. If you'd like to go more in depth into it, check out Monday's and yesterday's video on the German article and the dev diary respectively. We get into some more speculation in those and 
more of a deep dive. For these weekly news updates, I try to stick to the cold hard facts. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the anticipation. Are you gonna jump? You better jump. There you go. And speaking of feet, feet! <laughs> and speaking of feet,